So a while ago, I wrote a tutorial for uh, analog design flow in uh, Sky 130, and um, I thought today I'd try the uh, layout parts because I saw that when I had students uh, trying this tutorial, then the layout is sort of one of the few things that um, was a bit challenging. So let's dive in. So. I'll post the uh, link to the tutorial in the comments, or not in the comments, but in the description. And you'll find the um, tutorial here. It's a web page. I'll, I'll try to update, or if you find a mistake or something, just fork it and then do a pull request. So the first part of the tutorial goes through the tools and what you need to get started. So. I'm going to skip that part and we're also going to skip the schematic. So it explains so how, how I set up the files and so on. We don't need to go through that today. How to create a directory for the IP and get the technology set up. One thing to note is that while I did this tutorial, I also made sure to uh, make tags for um, the different points. So as we can see here at all point uh, zero 04 or 0.040, I made the corner simulations and then I started layout. So what we're going to do now is let me jump to the to terminal. So right now you can see I'm on main. If I do git tags, I'll tag, and then I can check out git checkout 040. So in this case, if we do a ls or a tree, let's have a look at the files here. So first of all, you can note there's a readme, uh, there's some design files with a schematic. Unfortunately, showing that schematic doesn't really work at the moment because for, for some reason, when OBS captures the uh, X scan, the schematic just looks funky. I haven't figured out what it is yet. But anyway, there's a simulation folder where we have the simulation results and um, the test bench, tram.spy, and then there is a work directory. Now the work directory will have a set of file for xchem, and if I go into the work directory, there will also be a set of file for mag magic. And that, the way I do it for my technologies is I, that I have that magic RC file and it sources a sort of common technology setup. So if I go a couple of directories up here, you can see my different IPs. Let's do it like that to add less on the screen. And I've sort of put a layer on top of the Skywater PDK uh, called Tech here that has the technology files. The reason I do that is that in my IP then, it is easy to link in the technology. And then I have a similar directory structure for all of the IPs. But if I go into work and I start magic, actually, before we do that, let's scroll down to tutorial and find the layout parts. So blah, blah, making the schematic. There should be a picture of that. So what we're looking at right now is a simple current mirror. Typical spy simulation, we're skipping that. Modify measurement, skipping that. Modify result, check waveforms, all corners. Let's see, at some point here we'll get to draw layout. Okay, so we're gonna use magic. First thing it tells us is to start magic. Let's do that. It's gonna take a bit of a while to start up, I guess, because X isn't started. Interesting. Let me just pause for a minute. Okay, now we have magic magic running. And let's see if we can arrange it so that you see the tutorial also. And then we have the control window for magic where you type the commands. Okay. Yep, that kind of work. Okay, 
So what we want to do now is we want to go to design. So that's where I keep the files, and I have made a directory for the library. You can see inside there we have the schematic, and then I want to load, or actually load, I want to create a new layout. So now that should be opened. And then it has some links to um, tutorials of magic. Let's skip those. Okay, add transistors. In the window menu, devices, NMOS. So let's pick NMOS. And then I want width of 3.6 micron. And I want length of 0 0.36. And I want two fingers. And then we can create that. Maybe create and close. Now I'll press V to zoom. And if I now press S to select it, I can also move the mouse. And let's see. And before we do that, let's actually shift X to unexpand. So we then reselect the transistor. Yeah, and now we can see we can move it. So in my schematic, I have how many instances did I have? Let me just check quickly. Okay, so I had... Uh, did I only have two? I think I had six. I need to do a figure out how many instances. Let's check if XCAM works now. While we're doing that, we can go into magic and let's zoom out a bit. That's shift Z. And when I select my device, hover the cursor over the cell and just click select. And before I do anything, I actually want to change the grid because then I can place it at sort of, uh, it's easier to actually, we also want snap to grid like that. Oh, there we go, X game. Uh, but I don't think you can actually see the devices. Oh, you can see the devices, but you can't see anything else. So I see a pretty current mirror. You see almost nothing. Anyway, uh, there is a diode connected transistor, which is our input. And then there is a second transistor, common source, connected to the same gate. So we get the same current since it has the same bulk and source and gate voltage. And there's five of those devices. So in our layout, we actually need six devices. So let's make sure we place the device like that. And then I can press C for copy. Actually, maybe I don't want full micron between them. It's probably better to do half a micron. And to place or to copy, I can press C. So that's one, two, three. Let's move over with the arrow keys. Four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, good. Let's check this tutorial, what it says I should do now. Okay, so now I've copied my devices. Yeah, and I probably want to expand, so I select a box. So selecting a box it's in Magic, you first press your right mouse key, and then you press your left mouse key, and then you can press X to see inside. And I don't want to see all the layers right now, because if you look here in the layer palette, here you can always sort of deselect layers by uh, left, now right clicking, Actually, I said wrong earlier. It's left click and then right click. Yeah, left and right. Difficult concepts. I can left uh, right click <laughs> on the layer palette to actually unhide. But instead of doing that, I can actually jump to my command window 
and I can write what's written in the tutorial. C no star, and then everything is disappears. And since I now want to route, I can do C local I, which is the first metal layer. And actually, let's see metal one also. Okay. So then it says select a 0 0.5 micron box below transistors and paint a rectangle. So that's middle clicking on local I. So then let's select a rectangle here. I select a box, maybe something like that. And then I middle click on the local I layer. So I can also, let's undo that. And if I do the same thing, and then I run write colon, paint, local I. So actually, every time you type colon in the main magic window, it will jump to the command window, and you will sort of can write the command directly there. And it's, this is the same thing. So magic has a bunch of macros uh, for you to be able to, um, well, do things quickly. And those you can code yourself, and you can actually see all of them, I think, with macro help. And then it'll show you all the key combinations. Right, so we want to route so it looks something like this. Okay, so let's zoom in. So we want to hook our guard ring up to here. Probably have to change my grid a bit. Let's just do there and there, for example, and paint. And now, instead of painting the second one, I can just select this rectangle and let's copy it. See? Okay. Now it's probably more things selected. Now let's just select that part. What happened now? Oh, right, it's actually collated. Okay, let's try something else then. Let's make a rectangle over here. Let's paint it. And then let's select it with S. And now if I select the box here, I can press Control Z to zoom in. And let's copy. That didn't work. Let's try again. <laughs> Uh, select that one and zoom in. There we go. Okay, so it won't be pretty, but it doesn't really matter. All we want is a relatively good ground connection. And this should be good enough. Let's do that for all our transistors. And then we also want to connect the source of the transistor. So that's the outermost... Um, metal layers here, we want to connect that to ground. So I'll just select the box here, roughly like that, and middle click on the paint, select it, and copy it. Okay, let's actually do it slightly better. No, I want to have it there. And let's select that one too. And I think if I'm lucky now, I can copy both of them. No, didn't work. Okay, fine. Maybe I have to press S to select and then Shift S, is it? Or Control S? Let's see if that works. No, doesn't. Okay. There's probably a way to select multiple things. For now, let's just uh, make it easy for... And we'll just do all these connections. Select, copy, copy. So if I was actually doing this layout, I probably would spend a bit more time on cleaning it up and making it look pretty. It's always a good idea to try and make the layout look pretty. And it's actually a good reason for that because quite often if you make it look pretty, then you have relatively well-behaved uh, parasitic capacitances. Okay, like that. Okay, right, fine. Okay, maybe my OCD requires me to do that. Right, so now we have connected all the sources to ground. And let's see what's next. We want to route gates. 
and then I want to turn off uh, local I. And if I go back to the main window then and write colon, C no local I, and you can't see what I'm writing now, but it'll actually appear back in the window here. So you can maybe see that. Okay, then we want to route the gates. And in that case, we just want a big rectangle around them because here we are connecting all the gates together and only one of them will be uh, connected to drain, which is our direct connected transistor. So let's just draw a box around here and go all the way to the end. Mm. And that should be about there. And middle click, and now it's painted. Let's zoom out, go to the middle one, control Z to zoom in. Let's paint a rectangle here, and here I'm not gonna hit perfectly. Let's change the grid. Let's do 0 0.1, no, that's still 0 0.1. Let's do 0 0.5, okay. Hopefully this will give us too many DRC errors when it's not actually abutted. Let's make it a bit wider. Usually it's okay if you have slightly wider notches. Okay, like that. Right. Now we see also there's gate connections at the bottom and quite often it's a good idea to connect them both. It doesn't really matter if you're doing low frequency stuff, but for high frequency, you can imagine the gate poly. Actually, let's, oh, do I remember what that is? C poly, no, C N poly, N transistor, I think it's called. Yeah, there we see it. Okay, so if you imagine our poly gate now, so the material in the gate here, that's gonna be polysilicon. And polysilicon, although this usually has silicide or a type of metal on top of it, the resistance is relatively high. Now, if you have a very wide transistor and you only have metal or gate connections at one end, then at some point you might actually have trouble sort of getting the um, charges in and out of the gate because it has a certain resistance, it has a certain capacitance, if you're doing high frequency, then it actually makes sense to connect both sides because you then half the uh, gate resistance. And since our transistors in Skywater, by default in the device generator, has this double gate, we just uh, conform and add a box around that too. Let me zoom in. Now I pressed Control C to zoom in there. I wanted to zoom in over here, something like that. And then middle click to paint it. Okay, now we have connected the gates and now we need the drains. So I have connected the drain of the die connector transistor, but here I need to connect the drains of the other ones. I discovered one thing in the magic, and that is, I don't know why, but it seems like uh, for these P-cells that are our transistors, it doesn't really know how to look inside and actually do routing uh, from metals inside. So you kind of have to add a small routing rectangle. Actually, let's go to a slightly larger grid so it's easier to see. So we have to add a small routing rectangle. Let's, oh, let's, <laughs> uh, oh, okay, here, something like that. And let's just paint that. Now, in Magic, there's also a routing tool. So if I click the space bar, I can now go into routing mode. And now it will select local eye. If I do, let's see, shift left, then I move a metal up a metal and shift right to go down. Hopefully I got left and right right. right. <laughs> let's see. But one thing here, um, I can't go in metal one in this direction because then I connect my um, metals together 
actually let's escape that actually because I've connected the wrong thing here I wanted to do a rectangle on the drain this is the drain okay try again spacebar to shift to the route tool and then it should be shift left to go up and I can't see the wire now but that looks great. And then we need to see metal 2, which should be down here somewhere. There we go. And then I can go over to the second drain. I need to press the left mouse button to route. And then I can click shift right mouse button to go down. But now if I continue, it'll be in, in local eye. Sorry, in the metal 1. But I don't want to do that. I want to go back up so I can sh shift left and route further over here so let's click shift right shift left over here click left click shift uh, let's see what down and left and then go up again over here left click right click left click over here left click right click left click and here left click right click left click and then I can click uh, right to stop it okay so now I've hooked up those I hooked up my gates and you can also notice now I don't have any DRC errors anymore. Okay, so now I need to add labels. And in order, before I do that, I actually want to, what did I want to do? Yeah, I want to see everything. <laughs> see star. So I see all layers. Okay, and let's get rid of this extra rectangle we added at the end. Let me just uh, select that and then press D for delete. Okay, so now we can see that we think everything's been routed, but for but before we can actually run the layouts ver layout versus schematic, we have to check one thing, and that is have we added labels? Because when you do layout versus schematic, it actually needs to know what is ground and what is not ground. So in that we need to add text to add labels for the ports. So let's zoom in. Oh, now I'm in the routing tool. Let's go back with spacebar to the box tool. Go up here and control C to zoom in. And then let's see. Oh, it's a good idea to save in magic. And I want to have Ripley. Uh, what did I call it? Let me just check that. Ripley EX0. So I want to call my magic this uh, magic file the same thing. Okay, like that. Right. Yes, right. Okay, good. So now I should have a magic file. And magic files are actually text files. So if I do a cat, mag. Then you can see I have added transistors and they're also a cell and you can see that cell next to, oh, that's this cell, okay? And there's no labels in here yet. But I can go back, let's see, I need to select the box on the metal and use edit text. Edit text is probably, I would assume there is a way to do this with macros also. And uh, now I'm pointing to AVSS, so that's what I call ground. I think one micro might be a bit large. Let's do that and apply. Actually, we want a port. And port number. So here I want to check something. So I know, since I've done this before, I know that when we have port numbers in XCAM, which is also a text file, 
the the ordering of the um, ports matters. So I have oh it's actually called VSS. Okay, so I need to change that. Um, and that's port number two. Let's see if we can do this and then say that's number two. Okay. Okay. Let's try that again. Oh, I delete the rectangle. Now here it becomes interesting. So how do I... I'm not sure how I actually delete text. Because now I delete the rectangle also. I don't want to do that. Okay. Since I don't know how to do that, I am going to cheat. So I added the wrong label now. And I don't want the one called AVSS. So let's just go into the, the magic file. Let's delete that text. And here we're actually missing a port. Let's delete that one too. And then save it. And if I now take file flush changes, then I'm back to what I should expect. So, okay. Then it's deleted. Let's try it again. Let's select a box on the metal, edit, text, VSS, uh, size, fine, we want a port. Okay, so let's try that. That looks correct. Okay. Oh, I added port 3. Cancel. Let's save that. And let's go back to VI. And right, yeah, so now we have a label called VSS and a port called 2. Fine. Now, what was the other ports I wanted to add? I'm just going to go to the schematic. So at the drain node, I want IBNS. Actually, that label is wrong. That should be PS. Okay. And IBPS. Okay, so then I go back here and let's find. Actually, let's just route a bit. Well, that's fine. We can always find that. So let's place a box on this metal, which is our drains of the output. Edits text and which port number was that uh, I'll be let me just save the schematic okay so IBPS 20 was port number one okay IBPS 20 my cramp apply Okay, that's big. Fine. Why not? And then we want the gate, and that's going to be up here. And that's going to be IBNS for my clamps. And I guess that's port number three. Apply. Okay, so now I have labeled my ports. I have, yeah, added everything. So let's file, save. Right. Okay. So to run LVS, I've made, made a make file. And that make file includes a lot of commands. Uh, so if you're not familiar with make files, actually, I need to be in the work folder. In this uh, tutorial, you always need to be in the work folder when you run magic, because that's where the setup files are, and that's where the make file is. So the make file references the uh, technology make file. And if we have a look at that, that has, for example, DRC, uh, LVS, and so on. Now, the make file is nothing other than it has the list of commands on how to run LVS, 
and so on. Actually, if I'm just in this directory and I write make help, it'll give you a few hints of some of the commands. So what I want to do now is I want to generate a netlist from schematic. I want to run layout versus schematic. xch and xlvs. Oh. Okay, so now it'll run magic. Oh, and it'll actually tell us now that something is wrong. Let's first of all save this, and let's figure out what's wrong. Cannot find Ripley cell in XCH. So that's, that's schematic. So that's our schematic netlist. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a couple of comments here. I need to have a sub circuit. That. And let's just rerun LVS. Okay, incorrect, does not match. Fine. So let's go and see what didn't match. No matching net. Okay. Number of devices, two. Okay. So I think I actually know what's wrong already. And let me see if I can show you. So in the schematic uh, spice file, we can see that the length of the transistors is 0 0.36 and width of 36 and fingers of two. If I see in the layout spice file, what should I call that? Uh, spy. Oh, actually, yeah, uh, that's a sub circuit. And let's see if we can find the transistor. R mm. So that's 36. Right. So here you can see the problem. And let me try and explain it. So in our layout, for each of these transistors, we have two transistors that are 3.6 micron long. So we can see that if we select the box here. And I write uh, box, I think. And then we get the dimensions of the box. So that's roughly 3.6. Okay. But that means I have two transistors that are 3.6 micron wide, and that together becomes 7. Point, well, 7.2, I guess. Now, in the schematic netlist, the definition of fingers is actually different, because here the width is 3.6, and NF is 2. So that is a bit of a gotcha. I can just easily change that now by changing my schematic and changing the width of those to be 7.2. So bear in mind, for this version of the PDK, for some reason, the number of fingers are and width are defined differently in Magic and Xcam. Okay, now I'll fix that. And actually, let's, let's see. I think I'm missing an option because this should be uh, so it should set the top circuit to one. But s for some reason, it doesn't. Maybe it's the version of XCAM I have right now. But we need to remake the netlist. And let's do that first, because there was a bug in the netlist. Because we don't want the sub-circuit parts. Okay. And then I can run xmake LVS. Ah, oh, still doesn't match. 
But let's see if it got better. Usually getting the layout right with LVS takes a bit of time. And it's not always trivial to figure out what's wrong. But the way to fix it is... Wait. Let's actually look at uh, the log. Number of devices 1, number of devices 2. So is it still getting confused with the fingers, maybe? Let's just check something. If we have 4 to 0, and... Let me pause the video for a while and then figure out what's going on here. Okay, <laughs> I think I figured out what's wrong. So, turns out, <laughs> it's pretty easy or simple or stupid, but usually mistakes are simple and stupid. The hard part is finding them. So here we have one device and then we have five devices. That is six. But here you can see we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I've actually made one too many. So we have to delete one of them. So let's take this device, select that, and delete it. No, doesn't work. Okay, I probably may need to shift X, and then I can select it, like that, and then delete it. And select these. Oh, too much. And I'm actually not sure how to... Okay, so I can delete that, that. I haven't figured out yet how to cut rectangles in Magic. But that's not that important right now. Actually, let's... Here we have a bunch of small rectangles. It'd be nice to figure out how to select multiple things. Because now I just selected the top window. Because there's some small metal rectangles here that we need to get rid of. So, maybe comment in the video below if you know how to select uh, larger sections. And also how to cut metals. But for now, let's just leave it like that. It shouldn't change our routing. And let's try and run LVS again. Okay. Still no success. So it doesn't find the nets. Oh, did I label it wrong? Oh, I've named this correct incorrectly. Actually, that was uh, correct. This should have been NS. Sorry about that. Okay, so the reason for you can't see the actual current mirror, but the reason for the naming here is that IBP means the current comes from a PMOS. IBN means it comes from an NMOS. So it's just a simple way to keep track of it. But that means my texts here are wrong. So that could be why it doesn't really understand how to do this. Now, we have to somehow select... Ah, I don't know how to do that. I love the fact that magic files are <laughs> text files because then I can just go in here and I can uh, edit the text file directly. Um, so uh, this one should be N and this one should be P. Okay, good. And let's try it now.
Did I do it correctly now? Okay. So, RBPS form, that's correct. VSS, incorrect. No matching net. Hmm. All this might take a while. VSS, IBPS. Oh, did I forget to uh, rewrite the netlist? I think I actually have. Um, uh, did I have a. That's not the one I want. I think I may have a quick command. To fix that net list. That's not it. Well, that's because it's in here. Okay. Uh, fine one liner. So now our, um, yeah, now it removes the uh, that one. Did I call Bay both of them IBS? Did I forget to save it? Is that why? Okay, <laughs> now it looks like I expect. XLVS. No, still no cigar. Let's just check if we have the right port order here. Okay, wait, we're missing one. So it has IBPS and has VSS, but it doesn't have this one, IBNS, why? Let's have a look at the magic file again. No, that's not it. If you want to skip this section, then you can fast forward and... Uh, yeah. Okay, so it has the label. But it's not extracting the right thing. Did I have an error further up? So here it's writing the netlist. Let's have a look at that. Okay. Oh, do we have a short, maybe? Because you can see here, everything is IBPS, but it shouldn't be. Okay, let's have a look at the layout. So, a good way to try and find shorts is, first of all, let's turn off the grid, and let's do C, no, star, and we want to Make sure we see everything. Okay. And 
let's start with metal one. C or local I, I mean. Okay. Let's have a look. There might be some fancy way to find shores, but I'm not that good with magic. Okay, so nothing there. But why does it say this is in... Does this have a metal layer? Ah. Right. Okay, I see it now. So, <coughs> this label is in local eye. That's VSS. This label is in space. No idea what that is. But that's definitely wrong. It should be metal 2. Okay, let's flush the changes. And let's see everything again. Okay, and now let's run LVS. And let's have a look at the... Huh. Still wrong. That's weird. Oh, now I see it. I see it. <laughs> so I've actually, I've got a short. And it's here. So you can see I've actually connected the drain here up to metal 3, but I shouldn't have. Okay, so let's set grid. And let's turn on... Uh, yeah, so this via. That shouldn't be there. Because now I've connected the metal free routing across, but I've also connected the one that has the diode connection to the gate. So that shouldn't be there. And then I should be able to select that. Maybe I have to shift X, zoom in a bit, and select that one, delete. 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 Shift to the wire tool and connect. Okay. So now I've removed that short. If we save, right. And let's just do the uh, extraction of the spice nut list. Let's have a look. Okay, so now we have ABNS. Fantastic. And if we then rec make uh, XLVS, and actually let's see what that does. So first it makes a directory called LVS, if that doesn't exist. And then it loads, well actually it creates a tickle script that you load into magic. So it sets the AVD and AVSS. Uh, which actually maybe should be changed so you have the right ground names and, and uh, and power names for your circuit. And then it loads the magic layout we looked at. It extracts all and extracts spice uh, and then puts the uh, spice file out. So then this line is just running that uh, tickle script in um, magic. And then we use netgen to compare the LVS spice list towards the schematic by spice list using the tickle setup for um, netgen from the PDK. And then we just run the log file from the LVS. Uh, this is through a custom script I wrote, so you can check that out. That's in the text setup. And yeah, so make XLVS. Let's see. Yay, now it's correct. Good. So, one thing to check is we want to simulate the parasitic extracted netlist. So we can see that in here. So we want to make the extracted netlist. Make LPE. We can have a look at that. what that does. So it does this kind of the same thing and extracts, but then it extracts the capacitance in addition and uh, so on and writes the spice file. It writes the spice file to a different directory though. So if I do make 
LP. And P splice. Okay, so here we can see now we have gotten some capacitances. A couple of things. Make sure that the port ordering is the same for your schematic netlist and your layout netlist. So let's have a just rep that. And let's take the schematic netlist. Okay, so then we ha don't have the same port order actually. Here we have VSS first in the schematic, and then it's IBPS. Okay, actually, let's check what I did in my simulation in test bench. So if I take that, and I think there was a Tron SBI, let's grab XDUT, I think that's my instance name. Okay, so in, in the test bench, I have VSS, I have IBPS. IBNS 20 micro. So I need to have the same port ordering in. Well, I want <laughs> the extracted netlist to have the same port ordering. Because if it doesn't have the same port ordering, then I need to change and then I need to edit the spice file every time. But you can actually just do that in magic by editing the uh, layout directly. So let's just go down to port. So I actually wanted, what did I say? I wanted VSS first, and then I think I wanted uh, that one second and that one third. Is that it? IBPS first, IBNS second. One, two, three, yeah. And then let's re-extract. And let's check the netlist from LPE. And now it's, it has the correct port order. So then I can go to my simulation directory. Now, I'm really fond of make files because I have a horrible memory. And make files makes it easy for me to sort of just don't have to remember things. Which means that in these make file, I've always set up the commands to run simulations. So for example, when I do make typical, it will actually run netlisting for me because I netlist every time I started a simulation. That's just good practice because you might have changed something in the schematic and if you forget to netlist, then your updates won't be there. So I find it's nice to just add these things to a make file. Now make file, maybe I said it earlier, but make is a com command that is way, way, way old and it was used to compile files, but you can put any commands in it. So I can write make typical now. Typical. And it'll run the simulation for me. I should also say I have a Python script I've written to run the simulations. The reason I have that is because quite often I want to make sure that whenever I finish an IP, I can very easily regenerate all the simulations. And that means running all the corners, so typical temperature, t uh, high-low temperature, high-low voltage, typical voltage, and fast-low, slow-fast, fast-fast, and, and slow-slow uh, transistor corners in addition to typical. And I want it to be easy to do, do that. So what this uh, Python script does, called 6sim, it'll take my input transient test bench. Let's actually open that up. And everything here is on GitHub, so you can just download it and use it. And I'm using Doom Emacs normally, and Doom Emacs has a lot of packages, so it takes a while to start up the first time. But after that, it's uh, relatively fast. Come on. ASX, uh, IP. I'll, I'll put the link to the GitHubs for these uh, tools or these IPs in the description so you don't have to copy them. 
Okay, Sim and Ripley, and I want Transient. And the text is a bit small, let's make that bigger. Something like that might be easier to see. Okay, so this is my test bench. It has the ability to have defines. This is a six sim thing. Uh, I actually wrote this before I noticed that uh, ng spice actually has a define set. But anyway, so I can write a command on the six sim line. Let's find that. So when you're running uh, six sim. Here we go. You can actually add options. So if I add a debug here, it would actually, if I add layout, it would include the layout spice file instead. And then I have a few options for the spice simulator, setting up the sources, setting up a voltage for the upper current. And what I'm actually simulating here is just what is the upper current, uh, running a transient analysis on that. So, and then I'm saving my porch. Yeah, and then, and then transient analysis. Uh, what did I want to show in here? Yeah, so that means I can easily, I don't have any of the libraries in here. The Skyward things are not in here. So what 6sim does is it actually just takes this transient spice file and then generates a spice file for every corner. And let's take the one I just generated. Did I render layout simulations now? I don't think I did. I think I'd run this one. So just take that transients and spy file and it'll include the spice library. And then it'll include, I've also set up a file in the technology setup, my technology setup with the temperature I wanna run at and the supply. So then I can easily run multiple corners. Before I try and show you layout, I actually just want to do one thing. So one of the reasons that NG Spice takes a while to start when you use um, the uh, Skylib uh, Spice, it is it, it has a lot of Spice files it needs to read. I think it's about 40, 50 meg of Spice files. But I had a look at that and I've actually changed a bit. Let's see. Okay, so I've changed the setup. I need to go in here and then I need my make file. Okay, actually, do I have. So, what I'm doing now is just looking at the files that the CIC sim uh, looks at. So, these have sort of a corner setup. So, these are the commands to CIC sim. So, you can run typical corner and then it'll just include this. I've made a couple of other corners also where it includes a limited set because I don't need all the transistors. I just need the PFETs <laughs> and NFETs and the capacitors and so on. And that takes a little bit shorter time to load. And that change I haven't done here. So here I can see instead of having ASS and so on, I actually want to have... So if I... S does this, is this gonna work though? So I wanna query the place A. Is this the only A's? Okay. Yeah, looks like it. I don't wanna replace that one. Next, next, okay, let's get that. Okay. So now it should actually run a bit faster when I run the simulation. So while that's doing that, let's have a look at the other files in the, in the uh, simulation folder. Here we have the test bench. And then I find it's good to actually split up the test bench from the measurements functions. So I have a six sim will also read a mess or measurement file type of thing. Actually right now there's nothing in it that's a bit of a disappointment. Anyway, but here I can write my measurement functions. Like, uh, oh, I'm blanking right now. 
I used to wrong spice format. Yeah. Well, that's weird. It's actually doing measurements. So let's have a look. Did I put those in the spice list? No. So this is extracting something. Did I open the wrong measurement file? I must have. What's this then? All oh right, <laughs> I was in the wrong folder. Sorry about that. Okay, try again. Here we go. So I have separated the measurement function. So in this case, it's measuring, or measuring, simulating, extracting, whatever you want to call it. It takes out the current at 9.5 nanoseconds. So if we have a look at the current now, and despise load output, and I want run, and I did simulate the typical corner. And I discovered you can also just write this. You don't have to have the voltage. Ah, I didn't want the voltage. I wanted current. Okay, that's called I V zero. Okay, here we go. So. One thing you can notice here is it takes a while for the uh, current to settle. That's fine because we're feeding in four microamps and running a transient analysis. So it takes a while for the current to reach minus 20 and it's not minus 20. We might actually want to simulate a bit longer so I can go into my transient test bench. Let's change that to, I don't know, 15 probably. And let's open up a new terminal, make typical. Oh, is my PC slow? No. Or my Mac. Let's run that corner again. Wait. Did I edit the wrong file? Huh, interesting, I did. Oh crap, no, I had to change the ones I uh, shouldn't have. I edited the wrong make file uh, recently. So uh, let's run this again. And it should be a bit quicker to load. Yeah, so now it's running K. Good. As you can see here, it starts the simulation a bit quicker than running loading all the spice libraries. That helps if you're running many corners. Yeah, you can see that's quicker. Okay, so let's load the right one. And since we're simulated longer now, okay, we can see here it's relatively settled. Actually, kind of being slightly paranoid over corners, maybe we should do 20 nanoseconds. And I kind of want to measure the current at the end. So I go into my measurement file and let's do uh, 18. 18.5, 18 18.5, okay. And since I now changed the measurement, so this is at 9, actually let's change, no, let's leave that, doesn't really matter. Um, now I've changed my measurements, only the measurements. And I kind of don't want to run the simulations again, especially if you run sort of 500 corners, well, no, that's the bad idea, but let's say 32 corners. Then you don't want to run the simulation again, so 6sim has an option that you can say no run, and then it won't run the simulation again. It'll just extract or run the transient. No, it can run, run the transient, but run the measurements, I mean. So here you can see it's skipping the actual simulation, but then it's running in despite the second time to actually extract the numbers. So to just demonstrate what I mean, have a look at the numbers here. So it's 21.7 microamps. 
So if we change that to 1.5 nanoseconds now, I do the same thing again, then we should see a much lower current. And here you can see it's actually much, much smaller because now we're measuring at a different time point. So that's sort of a quick way not to not have to rerun the simulation even though you change the measurements. And that's a really good idea to do and be consistent with because if you have an ADC simulation that runs for 24 hours, you definitely don't want to run it again just because you forgot to add a measurement. I think also I have a Python script in here that is automatically run after the yeah after the simulation. So that's also run by 6sim. And in that case, it will take in the raw data. Actually, it opens the YAML file, which is uh, outputted from uh, 6sim with the measurements. Let's do SCHKT YAML. So it'll load this file, and then it will read the IBNS20. It read the IBNS20 at 9. and then compute the settling error. And this is a pretty low settling error, so that's fine. I just want to make sure we simulate or we measure those at slightly different time points. Yeah, so that's why I have 18 and 18.5. Okay. So the six sim thing, I've made that. You don't have to make it, but you don't have to use it, but uh, I've done a few chips over the years, the last 20 years, and I think I've gotten relatively good at how a setup can be and how it could maybe be to be able to do proper verification and proper simulation. So let's switch to layout simulation. And by doing that, I just need to change the lay, this view parameter that's actually included in the 6sim options. So if I then just run, make typical, now we want to run, because now we're actually doing the layout simulation. We run that again. And this is our previous simulation. Let's see, let me, where is in this Pasco? Let me load the latest sim, uh, schematic simulation, plot the I. And here we can see we're simulating it to 20. And then let's load the layout. And plot the I. Mm, that was suspiciously similar. Let's see if we can plot them both in the same plot and see that they're different. So then we want transient number three and transient number four. Let's see if this works. Ah, that didn't work. Okay, I think this should be possible to in in. Um, no such vector. Help command. Uh, I think I'm running in bad out of battery on my keyboard. Come on. Don't we have some sort of help? Help all. Okay. Could I list all the Lay, uh, loaded waveforms. Okay, I don't remember how to do that, but it was a bit suspicious. So this was transient three, and then transient four. No, they're different. Yeah, you can see the two different simulations. Okay, 
good. <laughs> and uh, maybe if we squint a bit, uh, you can see that it actually settles differently also. It's probably possible to get these uh, l shown in the same plot. I think I've seen that done, but, but I don't remember how to do it now. You can read the NG Spice manual. Okay, that was a pretty long video, but I actually wanted to be a bit, uh, let's say, thorough <laughs> going through the layout and then simulations after layout. Maybe one final thing, and when everything is uh, fine and you're sort of happy with the typical corner in the 6sim setup or in this tutorial setup, you can actually just run, I think, what did I call it? Aha! I don't remember what I called the command, but I know I wrote it down in a makefile, which is why I love makefiles. So I can do make all, and then, then it'll run typical, and uh, it'll run uh, extreme test conditions, it'll run Monte Carlo, and summary, and actually make a slide. <laughs> so we're not going to wait for that to end, uh, finish. Um, but I can tell you that it will output a file, a readme file. Let's have a look at that. So... So this is a markdown file. If you have pandoc install, you can take the readme file and let's turn it into a readme HTML. Then we can open the readme HTML. So it'll actually summarize the simulation results like this for the different corners. So you can have the typical values and the schematic values and the um, three well, uh, the Monte Carlo simulations. And we can see that, okay, the Monte Carlo variation for our current mirror is not exactly within spec. This is a tutorial, so we're not gonna fix that. It also outputs a sort of uh, list of all the uh, corners and so on. So have a look at that. Hopefully you found this extremely long video useful. Uh, there's not that much information on analog design out there yet on Skywater, but I mean, thanks to all the people involved to bring this open source PDK to um, the world. And thanks to Tim and to uh, Stefan for sort of really continuing to develop uh, on um, XCAM and Magic. And thanks to the NG Spice team for uh, continuing to develop on that. Okay. Have a fantastic day.